Now, how has your, I guess, work or your industry has been changed uh, since COVID? What are ways that you guys have adapted to, I guess, still helping with mentorship and mental health and overall education advocacy in the midst of COVID? Well, you know, we've had to adapt to this new virtual uh, reality that we're all in, right? And so I'm a woman of a certain age um, and it, it, it's been a challenge for me just to kind of grow and develop uh, in technology. But uh, that's been one of the largest challenges. Um, actually, outside of, you know, all of the death and suffering, the pandemic actually has brought a lot of... Um, uh, a focus into our organization because you know we're not running as much as we've done in the past because when you're managing uh, programs that total 15,000 students a week you can imagine the amount of running that we have to do as an organization our staff is running from school to school our program managers and directors are all on the ground running so there is a, a bit of focus that we've been able to have now that allows us to uh, really zone in on what we want to do for our young people. Um, it's not as um, palatable as doing in-person instruction, but I think the technology has been the largest uh, challenge for us, but we've worked through it and that's why we've developed these different type of platform programs like the PSA that we did uh, regarding gun violence and our In the Classroom series where we do the table talk discussion with celebrities to talk about their roadmap to success. So these are the programs that we've implemented that is helping us now reach the young people in a virtual way. Now, speaking of gun violence and overall just setbacks, which why kids will need programs like the I Will Graduate program, why do you think it's such an abundance of gun violence and overall just mm -hmm. issues of that sort in our community? And what are things that you think that we can do to help change the narrative? Okay, so this is a loaded, loaded question. So that's why I try to kind of narrow down my answer. So, but I want to kind of bullet point some key points. Okay, so number one, we're 400 years behind that our race is, is playing catch up, right. uh, not just mentally, but spiritually, um, economically, socially, uh, all of the things that were uh, 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 done to us in slavery to break the African to break the, 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 you know, to break our spirits. So remember, we have to play catch up. Okay. So that's one whole issue. Let's put that to the side. But in addition to that, because the family structure is broken, what happens is that it becomes very difficult for us to really build our communities out. And, and, and so the, the, the foundation of a strong community is family, right? So if the family is broken, if there are no dads, all of the dads are where incarcerated and all of the moms are trying to be too fly to uh, really make sure that their kids are doing their homework, then you got a problem. And that is the core of the problem. So if we can now start to change the mindsets of the families, try to bring back the family structure, you will see a lot of the problems start to dissipate because most of the problems stem from home. Now, if I'm a mother and my child is on the street, a 15 year old son at 10, 11 o'clock at night, I don't know where my child is. That's a family issue. That's something mom does not have control over her household. Dad does not have control over the household. So that child is now in the street doing stuff they should not be doing. So it's such a loaded question. That's why I, I try not to really, you know, we don't really have as much time to really talk about it, but the systemic racism that has been uh, perpetrated against our people, um, it's deep rooted and we have to, we have to rid ourselves of it by changing our mindsets and learning how to uh, come together as a people to solve the problems within our communities, within our communities. 